both my parents had been teachers, trained teachers. And I admired them so that I decided that I also was going to be an educator. And uh, I have taught in secondary schools, mostly, and I have worked as an administrator in uh, tertiary institutions. And not only when I'm at home here, but even when I was in exile, I helped quite a number of people to get bursaries and scholarships to continue with their education. Because I felt that if people are educated, they have a chance, if they use that uh, facility, to be able to live a good life and to influence others. Yes. And this morning, I was talking to a lady, or a lady came to see me, who I helped to get sewing machines to do her business. And because she started using these sewing machines, she has established herself as a businesswoman, not only doing tailoring work and teaching other people tailoring, especially women, but also she has a nursery school and a primary school. And one of her daughters is the head teacher in the primary school. So I felt very happy that something I did over 25 years ago to a woman I didn't know, but whom I visited and she showed the capacity to do something and we were able to help in the government. She has turned out to be an influence in her own society. Positive. I think it is positive. I think they have many opportunities if they are assisted on how to use them. They need guidance and I think we have enough facilities to be able to do that either formally in government institutions or during in, in the uh, private sector through non-government organizations and civil society organizations. A woman trying to make a career faces the challenge of making a choice whether to stay at home and look after her children and bring them up or to leave the children with someone who is not highly educated, highly motivated, so that she can go and follow her career. It's a real challenge. And some women choose to abandon their children to women we call yayas and some of us, like me, we choose to miss some things so that we can bring up our children until the time they are able to go to school. Yes. It was a sacrifice, but I don't regret it. Well, I'm very glad to report that many modern men are willing to look after their children. But in the past, it was looked down upon. How can a woman go start looking after a child as if there is no mother, as if there's no grandmother? But now many women live like families in other parts of the world, and both of them take care of their children, as it used to happen in my family when my children were small. And also I'm, pre I'm glad to see that my children and my grandsons are also doing that. Mm. Many women are now aware of their human rights, but it is a very small fraction of these women. And we want to educate more people to make them aware. And we now have many other facilities which we didn't have when I was a child. There is the phone, the telephone, the mobile telephone. We have radio stations. 
not only in English, which is the national language, but also in the tribal languages. Also the written word. There's a lot being written, and let us face it, there is the internet. So there are many ways of women becoming aware of their human rights, getting examples from other societies, how other women have coped with these challenges of being women and being in employment.